Okay, here we are getting ready to uh, pull out the bottom relay board. And I got a little bit of a problem. We've got a soldered wire that goes from the, what is it? Rack reset relay down here to the advanced unit up here. So I've got to figure that one out see why that is jumpered like that um, maybe I'll end up jumping it again when I put it back together or I can figure out where it goes in the harness and see if I can repair it correctly we'll see what happens but uh, yep just a little update here and uh, getting ready to pull this board out shouldn't take too much uh, another thing to note I'm gonna have to unscrew this sideboard here where the uh, tilt is and whatnot because that is hardwired into the bottom board but everything else connected to it has got um, connectors on, connections on it so should be pretty straightforward okay got the bottom board laid out on the card table here and just doing an initial search of things uh, initial check over and what am I seeing here well let's see we got a nice quality fuse block that's nice everything seems to be nice and tight in there we'll double check the fuses per the sheet that's in the bottom of the game here what else we got At the back here, we got a 110 volt uh, coin relay coil here. And uh, why is it red? Well, because it's 110 volt. And then you also got to ask, what is up with some of these red markers that are on here? We got a couple here too. Those sleeves. No, well, those are 110 volt circuits. Just the way the game was designed back then. Not the safest in the world, but something you got to watch out for. And we've also got another one here. So be real careful when the game's on and you're poking around here. Got a pretty crusty lock coil. Not the end of the world. It could be bypassed if we needed it to be. But uh, it's pretty easy to obtain and we'll check that out. A um, little bit of corrosion on a few things. Nothing serious. Um, looking at the transformer, it has been high tapped. Which means the... Um, Instead of being on this lead for normal voltage, it's jumpered up to this one. Well, we'll see how it plays when we're done with it and make a determination there. Um, yeah, some water damage down here, moisture damage, I should say. So, yeah, I've seen a little bit of moisture, and uh, the tilt has tape on it. So we'll be taking that off and uh, should make it a more fair game to play. We'll start cleaning stuff up. If there's anything unusual, I will jump back in and... See how she goes. I am just about done with the bottom board here. Um, been cleaning the relays back on this side of things. And um, thought I'd just kind of show you what I do. At least for this project. You know, everything's different. Every project I do something different or do things a different way. But uh, one of the nice things about these Williams um, relay switches is they're all separated out into small switch stacks. So makes cleaning them really easy. And admittedly, I'm, I'm going at this a bit more than I need to, but I'm glad I did. I'm glad I'm doing it this way because I there's a few switches I found that were just pretty bad and standard cleaning just wouldn't have gotten it. So I'm... I'm not reprofiling every switch, but I am using the Dremel just to make things easier. So, take this out of here. And on these, we've got a small spacer on the end. This has small holes, so it doesn't go the, the little tubes or pegs or whatever you want to call them, hollow pieces that are in each switch stack. Don't go through this. It's just a spacer to keep the switch stack at the right, right uh, length here. And what's great about these is they're all in individual stacks, which is really nice. Makes it easy to clean them. So we'll just take a single one here. So all I do is I just take the exacto knife here and I carefully pry away one. And here the bottom's coming out, which is okay. So the end pieces actually hold the switch stack together. 
So if we peel off the end piece, this is this is uh, important to get these on the end. So we'll just put that up here. This is a spacer, and uh, like there's no tension on that, so that goes next. And same thing with this guy. This is a spacer, and on this one we've got a super thin spacer here. This has a little bit of tension on it, but it, main thing is not to crack it. So we'll just carefully use the X-Acto blade to kind of wedge it in here. And I cracked it, but that's okay. I got more of them. That's why you keep extras. It's not that big a deal. It doesn't bother me. And yeah, this one's just tarnished a little bit, but I just have a, it's like a plastic uh, burnisher on here is all it is. It's, it's it's a little wheel that's made of little plastic bits and just a little quick turn on that. Wipe it down a little bit and then go back together. And we'll just grab another little plastic spacer here, just a moment. Alright, so this is why I keep spares. If I lose them, at least I break them. And here we've got a tiny replacement. So this just goes back on here. Then we take spacer, and since these these next two spacers are just um, they're just on here, there's no tension on. It could be flipped around; it's not a big deal. This one's got the tension on it, and then there you go. Okay, here we are at the cabinet, and I'm ready to install the uh, working bits for the power switch modification. What we've got here is a power switch off a of System 11 game. That just happened to be what I had in the parts bin. And we got the nice plate from this System 11 game. You do not have to have this. You can make something of your own. This block here is to space this off the bottom of the cabinet, because you could put it in the bottom of the cabinet like this but the switch end will stick down and will break off or get damaged or just interfere with stuff if you move, slide the cabinet in a vehicle without the legs on. And of course we've got the hole saw. Um, I'm going to use an uh, inch and a three quarter because that just happens to be what I got. Works pretty good. It's about average. Some uh, check my games. Some I have a little larger diameter hole in there to reach underneath and uh, flip the switch and some are a little shorter and I'm gonna put it back in this corner technically it doesn't really matter but I want to keep it the same as other games and this will just go in here something like that and uh, let's see what else we got I picked up some 832 by inch and a half that should be pretty good I was gonna use carriage bolts but uh, couldn't find any really quickly so this will work in a, in a pinch and um, I don't know if I mentioned that, but here's here's the switch off the uh, System 11 game. We won't need the connector, and um, should work pretty slick. Okay, here we are at the moment of truth. I'm going to drill the hole. I've got uh, the wooden block bolted in. I've got a very tiny uh, hole drilled through the block for the center, so I know where to put this guy. And here we go. And there we go. As long as I have it flipped upside down, I might as well dress up the hole a little bit, uh, knock off any sharp edges with the Dremel, drum, drum uh, sanding attachment.
Okay, here we are back inside the cabinet, and it uh, turned out really good. I didn't have nearly as much blowout as I expected to. There's a little few chunks here and there, but that plate will cover it. That's why I flipped the cabinet over to drill it from that side, so any blowout would happen on this end of things instead of the finished side of the cabinet. So we'll put that plate back on and toss the switch in, and this side's done. Alrighty, switch plate is installed, and it looks... Really good. I'm very happy with how it turned out. And we'll just flip up the cabinet and we'll show you how it looks from the underside. Alright, here we are here. It looks really good. It is, let's see, we'll get on this side. The switch does not protrude from the bottom of the cabinet at all. It's uh, recessed a little bit. Plenty of room to get your finger in there and turn it on and turn it off. This will make uh, turning the game on and off much safer. Uh, of course, if you could do it if you had a switched outlet as well, but uh, this will work really good, and I'm very happy with how it looks and works. Okay, here we are back on the bottom board, and I've got the switch all hooked up. What I elected to do is, after looking at the wiring, is if we get close in here, I left the transformer hooked up the way it was, and because my switch is a double pole switch um, I'm actually switching both sides of the circuit so I took the original cord that went that way and I pulled it back so the transformer in the game power now goes up to here and then my new power cord starts from the back and also comes up to this point and this is where I've got the switch hooked into so both sides connect and both sides break when I flip the switch not just the hot and so that was kind of nice because I left the original power tap on here in case somebody really wants to use it for something I got it all zip tied in here and another thing I added was a strain relief for the power cord I chose and uh, let me get the power cord that I use here I get these uh, from pinball resource I really like it because it's super long and it's got a nice molded plug on it here. It's a really high quality grounded cord. Oh, and uh, if you didn't spot it, here's where the ground is. And I just went to the transformer frame. At, with this game, I'm not going to run a braid to the coin door and the side rails and stuff. You certainly could. Nothing wrong with doing that, but not for this project. So um, I'm just about done with the bottom. All the contacts are clean. And I got I gotta figure out something to do with these still, but that might wait till might be the last thing I do, I'm not sure. And um let's see I wanna label the fuses here, put some labels for them, because uh, the original one in the bottom of the cabinet's pretty rotten. And um yeah, that's pretty much it for now on the uh bottom relay board. Uh motor's all been lubricated and whatnot. Contacts here have been cleaned. Stuff should work pretty well. Well, that pretty much does it for the bottom board right now. Thank you very much for watching. If you would like, please check out our playlists on YouTube. we got a lot of videos out there, and uh, hopefully we've got them organized pretty well for you. Also, please check us out on Facebook. And um, thank you very much for watching.